Hey, buddy. Hey. Salud, man. Salud, ching ching Hey, for those of you that are just listening, welcome Jeez, to the Mo and O rule. photo You shit. broke the first rule. All right. When There's... you toast someone, you must drink on that toast. Oh, you're so right. <laughs> I was like, cling, screw you. It's like, uh, your health what? <laughs> Thank you. Ching, ching. All right. Now we... <laughs> oh, that's such a good wine. How much... Uh, we were just talking about this, but let's pretend we weren't. What is your go-to target price for a wine box I, wine i found <laughs> decoy wine and i really enjoy it and so it goes anywhere from between 18 to 26 dollars depending on which one i get decoy and josh for some reason i've, I've yeah josh does those. a good merlot and stuff there's it's a wine as a whole it's crazy there's so many bottles and they did studies where people just basically make their choice on price and label exactly that label looks good that one's too busy that one's ugly that one's plain <laughs> this one's funny yes, yeah yeah exactly uh so i i feel like you're right like around that 15.99 i shouldn't even say that because that's too snobby you know no. you could get a good wine for 12 when I first started drinking wine, I started drinking the budget wine. Um, what was it called? It, it has like... Boxed wine. No, no. It, it has, it's like a five ninety nine wine. It, um, oh, my God. It's like cooking wine. I can't even remember what it was. <laughs> it was actually pretty decent for a young, unexperienced wine yeah. drinker. Oh, please. We, I used to buy Australian... Um, their biggest producer of Australian Shiraz um, with a kangaroo on it. Uh, yeah, I know what that is. I know what you're talking about. Yellow, yellow tail. tail. Yeah, yellow, yellow tail. tail. And when you're first beginning, you think that's great because it's so sweet and sugary. And then you actually go on a wine tour. Like we went on a wine tour in Italy and they he took us He says you go on. No, he went on. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's what you're thinking when like, you're like that. But you're like, well, I'm never going. <laughs> no, I, I've been on a couple of wine. I've been to wineries. But yeah, continue your, your, your story. Yeah, no, I was going to say they took us on a wine tour and the revelation I had was they took us down into the basement where they keep the barrels. Mm -hmm. And once you go in there, you have this like musky sort of humid smell from the oak barrels. Mm -hmm. You want to touch them? You want to touch yeah, them? Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> totally. But then we went upstairs and they had us taste the wine mm -hmm. and I tasted the room, oh. which was like a connection yes. where every, everything they did with the bariks, they called them bariks, mm. which were the barrels. Right. I could taste the, he's like, you taste the soil, the earth, the humidity. It was crazy. And then when I had yellowtail, I was like, what the hell is what this? What is this? Is this ammonia? What is this? It's <laughs> funny. funny. It's funny because that's why uh, a friend of mine said, I can't drink wine anymore unless there's a cigar in the room. Mm -hmm. I don't have to be smoking it. I've associated good wine with the smell of a cigar. Do you know why? I bet. Why? Because the, the cigars come in those oak. Yeah. And the wrappers I, and the, yeah. I bet all that, like, yeah. yeah. Let's smell this guy. Let's see what we Ooh. got. Mm. Do you smell the, f well, we have two different wines, by the way. Uh, this Do is it. the end of our last bottle. Let me, here, smell this. Corona. <laughs> that one smells, different. yeah, that one smells a lot sweeter. This one smells a little punchier. Um, this one's oaky, earthy, yes. funky, and yours is like rosy, sweet, sweet. Yeah, I'm yeah. getting like banana smell almost, you're... <laughs> but there's no bananas in there. I know there's no bananas in there. Yeah, you know you're a snob, but you're like banana, <laughs> car tire. Actually, you know you're not a snob. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you use everything is stupid. You're like, okay, uh, scratch and sniff, cabbage patch kids, orangutan booty. <laughs> That's what I smell. <laughs> We should do that. We should go on a wine tour and be like, orangutan booty. Right, the hat has to come off because I'm steaming up the glasses. Oh, yeah. So All right. So those of right. you not watching on the YouTube video, we are actually together for the second time. We're, we're getting closer indoors. Oh, like oh, we're dangerous. on my porch now. <laughs> it's dangerous. But it was, worth the, it was worth the trip just for the wine. Totally. Totally. And so uh, we are slowly getting back together because we are sort of quarantined, you know, separately. I'm home all the time. He's home all the time. If you hear planes or anything, it's because we're kind of outdoors. This is an old... Hold on. Listen to that. We're on the pathway of Newark Airport. Yeah. And Teterboro. <laughs> Teterboro, too. Yeah. yeah. But that's not, a, that's not a Teterboro lander. That'll break the whole place. What do you like? A plane connoisseur? Yeah. Well, back in the day when they only had You're bi like, that is a 747. <laughs> yes, jumbo jet, multi-liner. All right, so welcome to the Mo and O Photo Show. Those of you new here, we are just best friends that like to hang out and talk. We have wine, we talk coffee, but mostly photography and technology. And my name is Omar Gonzalez. And I am Omar Ellis, world famous. <laughs> In my own world. 
And uh, what are we going to talk about today besides well, wine? Well, let me ask you a question about technology. Oh. Got the new Apple Watch. Oh. Right. The Series 6. 6. Do you care? Uh, first of all, I know you had one. It wasn't your thing. But did you did you like the feel of wearing it? Or did you just did you find that you didn't like it because you weren't using the technology of it? And you rather have an analog watch all at right, that point? All right, so a little, a little behind the scenes is this is the... I tried the Apple Watch twice. Okay. And so the first time it was like a mental thing. I was so distracted by its notifications, which you can turn off. Mm -hmm. But I um, I didn't like charging my phone. I so like the these guys, these right. perpetual, these guys, uh, you know, mechanical watches. I just like the engineering of a mechanical watch right. that is always winding itself as you walk. You could wear this forever and it keeps going. Okay. So the fact that I was getting into watches... Co that coincided with like getting an Apple Watch. And so it was a struggle between wearing an Apple Watch, which was technology, yes. and my love for the mechanical gears. Yes. So I got rid of it. Then I got another one because I wanted to know how my heart was doing and count my steps and do the health thing. And um, again, I had to like charge it and think about wearing it. So I got rid of it. I, I want to simplify my life a little bit. So I got rid of it, even though I enjoyed it. And then when this guy came out, I was like, I'm going to get it again. But Listen, no. To me, I'm the complete opposite of that. I love, actually, not really the complete, because I also love the look and feel of an analog watch. And I have a whole bunch at the house that I never wear. Yeah. Because my technology side is so much stronger. Yeah, yeah. So, like, I I've had... All the technology, all the new watches that have come out, the, the Samsung I know, 3, the last time we were together, the, yeah, the one. Samsung one. And, and I love them all. And and the thing is, like, I get rid of them because the opposite, I want to start wearing my analog watches. Oh, okay. And then the minute something else comes out, I'm like, oh, I got to get that. <laughs> I got to get that. Yeah. I get that. And you know what's even worse? I buy so many phones and sell so many phones over the course of my lifetime T-Mobile actually calls me when they have like a ridiculous sale going on or a deal. Oh, they're like, hey, we know you. Hey, hey, hey John. <laughs> they don't even call me Mo. They're like, John, you know what we got, right? You buy one watch, you get eight lines for free. <laughs> oh, my God. So that's exactly what ended up happening. I ended up getting this this uh, at half price and the whole line is for free. I don't have to pay the $10 a month for it. So what do you what do you get from it? Like, what do you like about having a smartwatch on? And do you think that... I mean, you you can attest to this. Um, is it a distraction, like day-to-day -day notifications, looking at your phone? When we were filming our last video mm -hmm. of shooting together, I'm, I'm editing it, and you're in the background on your phone all the time. Don't you weren't even shooting. I don't even So that's my question is you're, you're always on your device. Do you find that you're always on your watch? No and yes. So I, I love it because I, even though I'm not walking anywhere. Does it buzz? To tell me to get up and stuff like that, yes. Oh, to get up, but like a, a stretch, notification walk. or like, I have my notifications to a minimum on my watch. Minimum, like you're not like Instagram, someone commented or no, YouTube, someone no. commented. No, the only thing whoa. that comes on my my watch is is money things. Like, is there something going wrong with my bank account? Oh. Did did I sell something? <laughs> did uh, you just buy something? Did oh, I make a bank. deposit? Did someone deposit money in my account? Those okay. kind of things are the only ones that come to my watch generally. Um, you know, like I, I do Instacart because I don't go food and shopping. Texts, I hope, like texting. No, no, no. oh no, 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 because um, I don't, I don't read my texts on my phone, on my watch. On your watch, okay. Because I I, 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 I used to when I first got the Apple Watch, I used to respond all the time, and I just found it annoying. Yeah, yeah. And then like, and then we all know Siri is garbage. She's getting better every time. I don't she, even use her ever. She's yeah. garbage. So dictating to her. I might as well like call up a four year old and ask him to bring crayons over. <laughs> you know what she says every time? This is why I quit. She's like, I I'll ask something. I'm like, Siri, um, you know, how do you boil an egg? Here's what I found on, on Google for you. 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 Or the, here's what I found on the web for you. As opposed to uh, Echo, we'll say Echo in case you're listening on your speakers, mm -hmm. the Amazon Echo will read. Right. Take the egg and so, out of the fridge. And so will the uh, Google Assistant. She, yeah, she'll, yeah. She'll sit there and go, basically, what people do in your city, <laughs> she'll narrow it down. What about the SE? Did you consider the SE? I did. Um, but you know me. Yeah, you want the best, damn it. It's, it's, not even like, it's not even like I would lie to myself and say, you know what, I should get the SE because it's all I need. But then the rest of the time, I'm like, well, what if I had the better one? Yeah, yeah. What if I had the better one? That is my problem, you know. I've, can I, can, I've, go ahead, I'm sorry. I've curbed that 
tragic flaw of mine substantially, but I have not gotten rid of it, you know? Yeah, there, I have a thing where I want the best. So let's think cameras, for example. So the, like, for example, the Canon R5 and the R6. Right. I would just get the R5, like if I wanted the best. Right. But then I'm so money conscious that $4,000 plus lenses like hurts. So then I just I always justify the one under it. Right. So if it's an iPhone, you know, you always go for like the Pro Mega Maxer Niner. <laughs> I used to. I and did. I always go for the budget one. I got the budget one. Oh, yeah, you said that one. You like that one. You know what? Are you getting the new one, the 12? I don't know. I'm going to wait to see what it happens with it, what it comes out. Guys, take uh, comments below. <laughs> Bets if Mo will get the newest phone. Oh, I'm such a whore. <laughs> I keep telling Mo, guys, don't you think that he should, He he's always around new technology. He should do unboxings and things, man. And you, you, know, do, the, that the you problem would is, kill it. The problem is that there's like three trillion But you know what people tech watch guys. for, well, they watch for you. They yeah. want to unbox with you, yeah. you know? I was, I was actually typed in this morning, uh, Google Pixel 5, which was just announced yesterday. I'm getting one. So I already pre-ordered one. But anyway... <laughs> um, I, I looked around to see what videos are out there um, describing the difference between the 4A G, 5G and the 5. Okay. Like you would ever get the 4A 5G. And what I did was, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what I did was I found like a thousand little guys that had posted their own opinions on it with like two views oh, and three okay. views. And All you know right. what? I watched them. You know, I said, give the little YouTuber some help. <laughs> the only ones I couldn't watch here's my tip for anyone doing YouTube videos. If your audio is garbage, you're not going to retain an audience. Yes, yeah, audio, definitely. That's what it is. Like, when all I heard was like, oh. Our video here is worse than our audio. Like, we're shooting 1080p and we're tiny in it. But oh, we're super HD. Yeah, <laughs> the sound quality, I mean. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So that's what I'm saying. So, yeah, I mean, I love giving new YouTubers a chance. And that's what I was looking for, the, the Pixel 5. And then all of a sudden, when your garbage audio came on, I'm like, I got to go find something else. Where's yeah. Marcus? <laughs> yeah, Google contacted me and said they're sending a Pixel 5. And I thought, it was, gosh, that was so quick after the 4A. It seemed like the 4A was thrown out there to see how are people going to feel about this. Right. Because imagine they came out with the 5, which is more plasticky. Do you think it would have gotten bashed? Being so if like the 4A a, was a 5, you're saying? No, let's say they just came out with the 5. Forget the 4A, mm -hmm. which is a great budget phone, and forget the 4A 5G. Let's say they just came out with the 5, which is 700 bucks. It's got a metallic back, though. Supposedly it's got it's a metallic back, and, of it, aluminum. and it has aluminum back, and it has a... Wireless charging. How? The world is baffled. <laughs> like, Flossie Carter right now is, like, doing backflips because he's one, he's happy, because he's always saying, Glass. I don't care how it's done, get it done. Get it done. Someone got it done. That's cool. So, yeah, so you're saying you're getting it, you're thinking about... No, no. Well, go look at this. We're going to rewind that and replay it. <laughs> no, no. Well, go look at this. <laughs> no, we're not. I have no Mo control. Mo just spilled his wine. No, no. Oh, it's so good, too. That's, I'm mad. Uh, no, Google is sending it to me. I'm part of Team Pixel, which is Google must have so much money. They're listening now, aren't they? Yeah, because you said it's, it's like Right now, president. there's a, a room where yeah. they're like, Talking Omar. bad. Yo, Sector Omar. 14. Sector 14. <laughs> <laughs> they must be so gazillionaire. Mm -hmm. They throw phones at influencers. I mean, not even influencers. Like people that have... You You, you qualify. But I'm not saying oh, you, thanks. you. I'm not saying you for that. Saying I'm, I'm saying I've seen people with like 3,000 subscribers. I know. I know. Get, and, get and, them. And, and uh, yeah, it seems like they must have an algorithm on who maybe has the, the certain amount of followers or who uses Google. And at first I thought they're lying. Google didn't send them that phone. I but know. then I see that they got the actual box. I'm like, oh, maybe Google did send yeah, them that Yeah, yeah. So cool. um, thank you, Google. And I, we have to hashtag gift from Google, but they do send us phones. And, and I'm really always worried, like concentrating on the camera. I never want to try to be like a phone reviewer or right. anything. That's my job. <laughs> yeah, that you should be. Should be. And... Um, yeah, the cameras are just so good. I, I like going out with the the Pixel cameras and and shooting. So, and that's why I got it because I I have the Note twenty and I'm the Note twenty Ultra and I'm very happy with that phone, but I want another phone to put in my pocket to just take a quick picture with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? When because, you don't have a camera, because it's, it's exactly what it's what the Pixels are amazing for. Uh, you know what? <laughs> that's not a little asthma for you. So it, they're just so amazing. It's like. 
people say, oh, the iPhone cameras are the best. I don't like the or the warm, the heat. white balance. Yeah, yeah the, warm, the white, white balance, balance is a little strange. I'd rather deal with the strong contrast of the Pixel uh, lineup than than the, the warm, punchiness. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's just so weird. And then Samsung is always somewhere in the happy middle. You know, you never you're never gonna get a bad picture from any of those groups, but. That's the whole thing. What's what's been your favorite phone camera of all time? The Pixel? definitely the Pixel. the The Pixel Four. I loved the Pixel Four as the best camera phone slash phone. Love the face unlock. Loved it. Love the face unlock. And that battery. But the battery. Oh man. The battery was. If that battery just lasted half an hour longer. <laughs> You know, <laughs> isn't that funny? And that phone, the design was great. The colors were great. I, I really enjoyed the Pixel Four the most. I love the way it felt. the 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 weight of it. The, the I, I didn't even mind the lopsided forehead. People complained. No, about. no, not at all. But but definitely when when you couldn't when I couldn't get halfway through my day without having to recharge it. Yeah, it was rough. The battery oh, was rough. Man. Even when even the bigger one was a problem. But my wife. And uh, she is in love. This is for someone who doesn't do anything on phones. Like she just wants to call and she can surf and text. Mm. The Pixel 3a, mm. she loves. Oh, that was a great phone. She, I'm, I'm like, hon, I have the Pixel 4a for you. She doesn't want it. <laughs> do you know why I didn't keep the 3a? Because you're a whore. It has 64 <laughs> gigabytes of memory. What are you putting on there? I start with 128. Okay. Uh, all right. No, no. I, I have, I have a, a memory card. That when I transfer my information from one phone to another, it moves that information. I got thousands of years of yeah, photos you're right. on which, my memory card. Which phones have removable? And uh, is that something you think people need? Or do you think you can get away with 128, 256? So, so a thousand years ago, like last week, I, I probably <laughs> thought I always needed a memory card. But I found that as long as the phone has a th- 128 gigabytes right now, I can move everything over and still have space left over. You don't use cloud services? Like maybe all my photos are so I optimized ha- on either Apple? I do. And where are most of your mobile photos? So Do you have like half Apple, half? I have a large chunk saved on my Apple cloud. I have a large, the biggest chunk saved on Google cloud. Yeah. And I have a small set of pictures of my son and things that I can't, that if I want to see right now, I need I don't need to worry about having service. Yeah, yeah. So those are on my memory card, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. So that's that's why I, I always loved it. And you know what? As long as I can move it to my phone, I don't care. That's good. I got rid of two services. You know how many like subscriptions we have yeah, in the world? Yeah, I saw that you canceled something today. Amazon. Yeah, yeah, Amazon. So I canceled two. Th- are they listening? They're part of Google. Right now they're like, boop, Omar, <laughs> Sector 7G. <laughs> oh, good. 5G, 7G. OG. But you know what's funny is... Um, we decided to just just get rid of Prime. I've had Amazon Prime for maybe 10 years or so, paying into Amazon Prime. And we never watch their Prime service, and we don't do the Prime reading. So it really is the shipping. And what am I, what am I buying on Amazon? Any camera stuff is B&H. Mm-hmm. And the stuff I buy on Amazon is like paper, right. uh, little wires, household things. I shop because of the convenience, and I think Bezos has gotten enough of my money. I want to see if I can go without Amazon Prime, so I dropped it. Could you survive? No, because I do a lot more shopping on Amazon. I don't just shop for that stuff. I, I, I could shop anything. I even use their um, their Whole Food services. Whole Food is a, is yeah, a supermarket here in New Jersey. Yeah, but don't you think that you could... I'm not saying you, but someone that wanted to cut ties obviously can find alternatives. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah, saying? So like, there's even Walmart, which is like a big. You you could go pick up uh, stuff locally at Walmart. You know what? This, Walmart. You know, you know this, the stuff at Walmart is usually it's never top top tier. Like besides the cell phone stuff, and then they get them really late. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's usually not top tier. I, I have we, we have a, a Walmart not too far. No, from I totally here. agree I, with I you. I there. think my whole thing is like being a slave to all these companies. You know, it's it's like. Damn, uh, Facebook is another one. Like, mm-hmm. I want to kill my Facebook because of all the stuff they do, you know, and all the the data. But then, like, I have all those pictures of my kids on you there. You can't download all of it. But where are you going to put it? They do allow on my you- Amazon cloud. <laughs> I'll sign up for Amazon again. <laughs> they, they do allow you to, when you're going to leave them, they do allow you to download all your photos. Oh, that's kind of nice. Yeah, because, um, you know, when I was dealing with, my hacked account that I never got back. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, they said, you know what? If it wasn't a hack, you could have just downloaded all your stuff. I'm like, but if I wasn't hacked, I would have still kept my account. <laughs> what the hell's wrong with you? 
<laughs> Do you pay for storage services? Like I'm, I was paying for Google, I think like an extra, like a terabyte or maybe 500 gigs. And I killed that too. I was paying two, three dollars a month. Yeah, I pay. I pay for 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 and Apple iCloud too and, for Apple and Google. I pay. So you know what I did? Two ninety nine on each of them. Right? Yeah. That's micro paying forever. Mm-hmm. They want you to pay two thousand dollars like in ten years because it's so small. But what are you gonna do with? I killed both, and I have my Synology. Oh, that's right. You have multiple. I made my own cloud. I made my own cloud. And now for my, it's great. Like the one I did keep was Dropbox because a lot of people, if you have to send them files and Mm -hmm. stuff, but that one may go soon too because my Synology is my own Dropbox. I actually with my... No, no, we tried it. It didn't work with us. Well, for my editor, it worked. I sent her a catalog. I'm stupid. That's why I'm dumb. (laughs) It worked. I figured it out. I I make a little share folder, Mm -hmm. and I have Omar Gonzalez Dropbox. And then when she puts the job back in, it automatically is on my hard drive here. That's awesome. Isn't that crazy? That is awesome. Technology is scary. Like, soon, all you have to do is say, send to Susan. (laughs) Send catalog. All right. So let me ask you some, some questions that relates to photography. Yeah. Before everyone turns away and runs. Oh, yeah. My God. We talk phones. That was Uh, fun, though. It was. So in the world of editing. Yeah. Right. We have to always think about the fine line. Now, event photography is different. I'm talking portrait work. Okay. Portrait work because, you know, events, you you get it down to a clean minimum and you get it out. You get it out because there's, you know, you're a not, thousand you're photos. You're not fixing every pimple and this, that, and the other. Yeah, so, yeah. so as a portrait photographer, I'm finding that I'm running into clients that have unrealistic views of themselves. Yes. And I'm torn between complete nip tuck retouching. Yeah. So you're asking like how much? How mu- how much is too much? Yeah. Or where do where do we draw the line as photographers? Or do we not care as long as they're paying us? Because I've had stuff where I've already touched someone up and I've slimmed them down and I've reduced their arm. You know, yeah. The size. arm is a big one. Yeah. And have had they come back to me and say, "Can you touch me up a little bit in this oh, photo?" Oh, I've had that happen too. And you're like, "Ooh, can I show you the before?" Yeah. Uh, how much retouch is too too much retouch? So, so this goes to women that are maybe very large or plus size, but are beautiful that way, right? Like right, the, exactly. you know, and are okay with it. Why would we retouch them? This is who they are. They love who they are. I love you for who you exactly. are. Exactly. Right. Exactly. But then there's there's people who request, like jokingly, Haha, get rid of this. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, they're like, as yeah. I pose. Yeah, yeah, get rid of this, get rid of this. So I think if a client drops hints, I will use the liquify, liquify tool um, just slightly where they can't tell. They wouldn't be able to tell, but they know they look good. Right. If you push that liquify tool or that that warp tool just a little too much where it doesn't look realistic, if then, the then person it's, it's notices it... It's a lie. Yeah, it's a lie. And not only that, it would be embarrassing for them to share because people know it's a lie. That's exactly what I was going to say <laughs> next. Like, like, I've had people who I've touched up already ask for a retouch, and then they're happy with the second layer retouch. Then that's good. But on their post that, people, that they post up, people are like, Susan, that's not you. How much did you pay the photographer? Like, 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 yeah, yeah. You know like what? they notice it. There's always, there's always that rude friend, right? There's always that one guy yeah, that calls so. everything out. You know? <laughs> He's like, well, how many friends do we have? We have friends that put filters on their own. Like, if you, th- we know how old they are. We went to right. high school with them. In in the question of how much to retouch, same answer for everything we talk about depends. Mm-hmm. So if you have people, I I will retouch, uh, you know, pimples and redness of skin, and things that are distractions. Like sometimes people's ears are a little too red. Mm-hmm. I have on Lightroom, I have a, uh, like a de-redify. Oh, wow. So for red nose and red ears, I hit that, and, I, and it gets rid of like red hues to try to even the skin. Mm-hmm. I'll do that. I'll smooth skin so it looks nice. I'll do that. If it's a single portrait, like for a poster, I'll dodge and burn mm-hmm. so that we're like, but Even slightly, right, right. slightly, so that we have a little bit of a nice shadow 3D. The liquify tool is always, it depends. Like, if someone is, um, 
a little too boxy, we will just push in a little bit. Create some curve. Yeah. Right. Because we all want to go back to our youth, man. You Not know? only that, but but, yeah. but what started the whole conversation was a lot of people have different opinions about themselves based on reality yeah. in their own mind. So I've I've retouched very little on beautiful women. Yeah, yeah. And I've been called out on that. Mm, yeah, yeah, Like, yeah. you got to touch this up, you got to touch that up. I'm like... Yeah. But, so then, you're, but you're no longer you anymore. Yeah, yeah, true. And it, it, so it, it doesn't matter your size, it, it's all what's in your head. Well, I'll give you another another client. thing to think about, and you guys out there, is a lot of stuff you can take, you can take care of before going into awesome. post-processing. Yes. You know, like, for example, let's talk about arms. Mm. Arms in moms, because that's what I mostly deal with, is these wonderful, beautiful women that are in their 40s and stuff. But our arms get a little flabby. Right. If you, the photographer, have that arm as the closest thing to the camera, it's going to be larger than life. Right. You're going to instantly warp the crap out of it. Yeah. yeah. The arm is going to be like in the... And also, if you're using a... Don't use a wide to lens. Yeah, 16 to 35. Right and you put camera. mom in the corner. <laughs> She's like a little troll. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Aww, so you mom. have to use <clears throat> the tricks to your disposal. Put mom towards the center of the lens. Right. Put the kids on the end. Let them be wide. Right. <laughs> Second, get that arm away from the camera. Exactly. So she can pull her arm back and pull her waist away from the camera. So exactly. And then also, if you're doing not event work, but portrait work, talk to your models before they show up. Male, female, family. Explain to them what they should wear, what they shouldn't wear. Yeah, that's like, a good point. like, like, like if if you, especially if you've never met the the family in person, if you dealt with the father the whole time. Yeah, you want to say, hey, make sure you don't go sleeveless or. Oh man, sleeveless you know, is sleeveless rough. Sleeveless is the greatest enemy to photographers. Yeah, ever because created. no matter how skinny you are, your arms rest on your body. Right, they, it, they create timer. they create creases that you normally wouldn't see. Hulk Hogan, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What you gonna do, brother? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so talk to your models, and when I say models, I mean whoever's coming, whoever you're working with, right. yeah, your subject, because you you must prepare them to minimize your work later. So I'll give you some situations that are like hard to deal with, like one one uh, type of um, style that is very popular is belly shirts. Mm. No matter how skinny you are, you we can't do sitting poses if mm -hmm. someone's wearing a belly shirt. You're going to get rolled no matter right, what. Right. Retouching-wise, again, just like every answer, it depends. But you have to know who you're shooting. If it's a plus-size woman, let's say, that's okay. Like If she's confident with her body and she looks beautiful as a plus-size woman and she loves being a plus-size woman, then we love her for it. We're going to show it. But if you have a plus size, let's say, insecure mom that wants a little tuck, I think that's a conversation that's okay. Let me ask you. The, yeah. Let me ask you about conversation. Do you ever just sit there and and pull over the dad or someone that is involved with the shoot and say, "Hey, how does she feel about retouching?" Never. Never. No, I wouldn't. No, I would die. Oh, I would yeah. be mortified. Oh, I think I would use my tricks more. Uh, just kind of assess in my own brain hey, that sleeveless dress doesn't really flatter. Or I have, I've had dresses that have like cutouts on the sides mm -hmm. and the rolls sometimes show, you know, like if you have a, a very low cut dress, then, um, you know, like you put your arms back, you're going to have back fat, right? which are rolls. Now, I don't know anyone that wants back fat, no. you know, like if, even if you're a plus size woman, you don't want, that's, it's very distracting. So mm -hmm. we have to either hide it or you can get rid of the shadows. What were you going to say? <laughs> something stupid. <laughs> All right. Like you can cut and paste something over it. <laughs> yeah, it's like a, a tree, like Bob Ross. <laughs> That's, That's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah. Oh. But what about you? What would you want? Let's talk about ourselves. Let's say we're not usually photographed, but what would you, if we were brave enough to ask, like, hey, oh, retouch me? No, no, no. I, I'm the, I, I, I'll answer the question I asked you. Okay. I have asked models, like, do you want me to retouch you because of? Really? Yeah, because. But don't you think that destroys a little bit of the like the trust and the? No, no. I, I prefer to I prefer to be honest with my clients. Oh my and if God. I see my client doing this the whole time, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. You know, they're very uncomfortable in what they're wearing. I'm already knowing that they're feeling awkward in that outfit. So I try to sit there and figure out like, hey, 
if anything doesn't look right, what's your, you know, can I retouch a couple things? You know, okay, I, okay. If you say it that way. Yeah, yeah. I never I say, know. listen, that, that fat dress you wore, <laughs> that was a bad choice. I'm going to charge you extra for all the editing I'm going to have to do. <laughs> so cruel. That's awful. Yeah, yeah. If you're, if you're, see, you could get away with it. I am so not going to go there because I don't shoot that kind of, you right. know, you, that you, I would use my tricks. And to, also the environments we're in, Omar, yeah. you're, you're, you're in a fast paced group environment. Family, I'm on a one-on-one. One-on-one, it's a slower shoot. A slower shoot. The music's usually, playing. We've yeah. already laughed a couple of times. If you haven't laughed at my shoot, you're not at my shoot. Yeah, I don't yeah, know where yeah. you are. <laughs> you're not at my place. Yeah. So, so that's what I'm saying. So I have no problem when I feel something that I'm going to have to go back and edit. I'm going to say, hey, listen, is it okay if I, you know, you know, retouch a couple of things here and there or something, something along the line where how, I don't sit there and say Is it good it. to say like, how do you feel about blank? Or is that like, uh, no, that's terrible. That's terrible. How do you feel so about... I, so in the conversation we had a few weeks ago, when I polled the audience on our channel, actually, I ended up then going back and actually talking to former models of mine. Okay. And I started asking a whole bunch of them. And 95% of them said, some retouching is, is just fine. It's, it's, they don't want it to be fake, where they Dude, don't recognize that it. That is a great point. That, I think that says it all. And when you go too far, it looks fake. People know that's not what the person looks like, mm-hmm. and that's when you're in trouble, I think. Yeah, my, my question was, do you want me to retouch the face just a little bit? Do you want me to manipulate this, the body at all? And I, and, I, and I pose a question like this. I said, when you are getting your photograph taken, not by me, by any photographer, what do you expect to be the editing process? Yeah. Only like two people say, no, give it to me raw dog, son. <laughs> and I'm like, well, you really shouldn't answer Yeah, that. you know, I, I think most clients don't know. Mm-hmm. And, and it's our job to to like deliver so that they go, wow, I look good. And they don't know why exactly. they look good. So the whole thing with, with clients is you want them to be as educated as possible Without bringing them to the other side, the of the other house. side, and unveiling the curtain of yeah, liquefy. You don't want to say they words know that exactly. Photoshop exists and that things can be done, and that Oprah has three arms. But two minutes till dinner, we're getting the signal. Listen, it's like wrap it up. <laughs> What's that? That that um, Dave Chappelle show? Wrap it up, B. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think it's an excellent conversation on how much to retouch, how much not to retouch, and um, I think it's a decision that each photographer makes and i follow some photographers that i love but wow the the models are just way too clean way too dodge and burn they look plastic exactly it went from a portrait shoot to a composite shoot you know? yeah so it's no longer the, the same the faces are you just might as well drop a waterfall yeah middle, you know? think about uh being subtle subtle where people don't notice and i think that's always the best the best retouching is where people don't really notice why they look good. I was going to say, if you asked me that question, the other day, my wife, I gave her my Fuji camera to take a picture of me. How dare you? <laughs> I'm kidding. And the light was coming from above, uh-huh. and my pecs looked like complete man boobs. Okay. And if a photographer did that and delivered that picture, I'd be like, <laughs> what the hell? Where's my, where's my like, deposit? Almost where... That. I'll, I'll put the picture here. I don't care. It was just that the light was so overhead right. that my amazing pecs cast an amazing shadow underneath. They foreshadowed. Yeah, and it looked like I had man boobs. <laughs> and if if that was from a photographer, I think they should fill the shadows under mm. because that's what I noticed right away. Shadow fixing fixes a lot. Fixes a lot. Oh, by, that's, that's like my go-to, like right off the bat. Either I show more shadow or if like, no, no, bring it down. <laughs> Show less. Show less. <laughs> Abort. <laughs> anyway, right, well, bud. Thanks for having me. I love you, man. Maybe thanks, cause thank I'm you guys for watching. Drunk. Yeah, that's what I put something in his drink, too. <laughs> All right. We uh, hope to bring you more Mo and O photo shows. Please like, subscribe, and share. And we'll see you guys next time. Peace. <laughs>